So you are good. It's a question. Are you sure? Another question. Now in your flesh, by reason of time, those who've been following these videos through this vessel, he goes into great detail explaining what this flesh is. You should know by now. It's your race, your culture, your sacred religious creeds, and your opinions of gender. According to your flesh, you say you're good. But the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, looked in a mirror one day and saw himself, self, his flesh, being a male Jewish individual living in Rome as a Roman citizen and according to the religious folk he was good and toward, according to the Roman government he was good because he was a citizen of Rome what did he say in me this guy I'm looking at in the mirror, in my flesh, my fleshy makeup. In my flesh, there's nothing good. Nothing. From a sexual standpoint or a religious standpoint, he couldn't call himself good. Yet he discovered something. This inward man, he called it. This being of his spirit with a whole different mind saying he called the mind of Christ in him his true self he says is complete any needing to be worked out but in order for this to be worked out and to manifest yourself as a son of God rather than a son of man, this son of man, this rogue fallen soul, has to surrender moment by moment by moment. And from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, from faith to faith, this inward being would be manifested when this rogue soul, by an act of its free will, surrenders and stops fighting thinking that it's good independent from God it's not good not one you can never say that you're good otherwise no matter how you may think of yourself or others may think of you You can't say that yourself is good. Why would James say, submit yourself, this guy in the mirror, under God, and when you do that, you're resisting the devil. Why would he say that? This image in the mirror submitted to God. This ego that you developed over the mercy of your life, being born in this world, cut off from this image that you were supposed to be manifest as, a son of God, and becoming a son of man, being conceived in sin, cut off from God, and shape the iniquity of your parents and that iniquity being made up of some particular race, culture, secular, religious, creed, or opinion of gender. Now I've said this over and over and over again and it seems to just go right over people's head with one ear and out the other. It doesn't register. When the Apostle Paul saw it, it's slow. 
what he thought was made him good, the law, and that he thought he could keep it. Thus he was good because he kept the law. He realizes the purpose of the law was not to make you good, but to reveal that you aren't good. Why weren't you good? Because you're born cut off from God, shaping your own life, going the way that Cain had went, that Adam had fell for, going totally independent from God, but was a living soul become a dead soul, and as that soul went, the mind of that soul so it went the body and he began to die. I mean, is that plain enough? I keep expressing this and each time it gets deeper and deeper and better expressed. So ask yourself, is this expressed right? Or is there something in you that says that, well, I think I'm pretty good compared to they that compare themselves by themselves aren't being wise. Why? Because you're not facing the truth. You're holding down this truth for a lie. The truth that you were born on this planet, cut off from God, shaping the iniquity of your parents, you're not willing to face the fact, this eternal fact, that you were supposed to have been manifest as a son of God and that God through His Spirit would have worked this out of you right from the get-go, but instead it has to wrestle with this flesh. Jesus, the Son of God, perfect, comes into the flesh and learned obedience by the things that he would suffer. Virgin born, unfallen, and never fell. Never yielded as Adam did and we did. Was obedient to the Father. He wouldn't speak a word necessary from the Father he wouldn't do anything the Father told him to do it. And it wouldn't be his words or his works. It would be the works of his Father. That's what Adam should have done. And that's what we should do. You. And wait. Through the spirit in you. In the mind of that spirit. Your true self. And not the self you have created with your opinions and ideas and getting birds of a feather flock together, getting others to agree with you for some particular race, secular religious division to join you, competing against one another, trying to pit one against the other saying, I'm good compared to them. You're missing your whole point. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, one day it will. Either at the white throne judgment of God, which I hope and pray to God you don't ever go there, or you'll go to the Bema Seat of Christ. And what could have been gold, silver, and precious stone will be wood, hay, and stubble. And you'll get in by the skin of your teeth, saved as by fire, because it will burn away all those members you thought you were good and had nothing to do with God. Was you trying to gain his favor when you already had his favor? How great of a favor could you be but to be begotten in Christ and have God call you son? So if you reject what he's offering you, what he knows is his eternal truth. If I had not fallen, you would have known this. But you have no excuse. Can't blame Adam. Any more than Cain could blame his father, his dad, for the fall. Because he tells him, the sin of your father lies at the door of Chicked outside the door. It won't fall on you. I took it away. The Lamb of God that takes away the S I N of the world, the sin. That would have produced the sins, plural. 
to its nature by deeds that we would call bad deeds or good deeds. In this light, there's nothing good. You could run a perfect life and stand before God and have him say to you someday, Depart from me, he who worked iniquity. I never knew you. And you will sit there and say, but I cast out that was your name. I gave to the poor. I attended the church. I, I, I read the Bible. I did everything right. I was good. Compared to those that didn't do what I did. You never discover that in you, that is your flesh. Your second religious makeup. There was nothing good. You had to see that fact. And the law was trying to get you to see that, and you were trying to keep it. You're trying to keep that which is impossible. It was never given to make you righteous, but to reveal your condition that you were born into unaware. 